I'm Micah Smith, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the top five reasons to move to Enterprise A2019 as explained only using emojis. To be clear, this is the Micah Smith top five reasons. This isn't like the, the end all be all. I want to hear your feedback on this, but let's look at my top five reasons to move to Enterprise A2019. So the first reason is the bot agent. Uh, if you're not familiar with the A2019 architecture, the bot agent is the utility that gets installed on a local machine for any machine that's going to be used for bot development or as a bot runner, whether that's unattended or attended. And basically what the bot agent does is this little service that's watching for the control room to send tasks down. And as those tasks get sent, it executes, right? So that means that, you know, the control room would send a bot to the bot agent. The bot agent would execute that. That bot would come in the form of a JSON plus whatever packages are supporting that, and the bot agent runs. Now, the bot agent in itself is pretty cool that it just connects to the control room and you don't really have to do anything for it. But where this is really one of my top features is because of the ease of updating the bot agent. So if you've ever maintained enterprise software in a large organization, you'll know that one of the biggest pains is when it comes time for upgrading things, especially desktop applications, right? So I've done this many times in the past where we have to upgrade a particular piece of software and we gotta make sure that it's updated on everyone's machine. It can be a real pain, right? Because you have to involve you know, either the group policy team, which does uh, you know, the Windows server management, or whoever's using SCCM internally to push that update to all of the machines that are using whatever software you're trying to update. And then you'll go through you know, a week where they keep sending you reports of what machines are missing and what machines haven't been updated yet, stuff like that. With the bot agent in Enterprise A 2019, I have two options. So one is I can let the bot agent automatically be updated whenever updates occur on the control room. And so all my uh, bot agents will automatically stay in sync. If I don't want to do that option, I have the ability to push those updates on demand. So I have a list in my uh, control room, right, in the devices panel, and I can look there to see all the devices that are connected to my environment. There's a little checkbox next to each one. If I check a box, I can check those boxes next to particular bot agents and push an update to those bot agents if I see that they're out of date, right? And this is really helpful if I'm you know, working with a test environment and I wanna update a couple of the bot agents so I can do some smoke testing to make sure everything's still good before I push that update out more broadly. So two options for handling that, but either way, uh, a huge improvement and uh, an awesome way to be able to manage software that's being installed on lots of different remote machines. The next feature is the benefit of human bot collaboration. Um, Again, if we look at the emojis that I'm using here, I'm obviously taking a little bit of creative liberty there. Uh, there's not actually an emoji with a robot holding hands with a person, but um, Ari introduces the capability for humans and bots to be able to interact in totally new ways. And it really gets me excited about the prospects for what can be done in Enterprise A 2019. So if you're not, not familiar with Ari, Ari stands for Automation Anywhere Robotic Interface. And it has these different interfaces for allowing humans and bots to collaborate in new ways. And it comes about in three different ways. First is RE for apps, where we have plugins for dedicated applications. So for uh, Excel and for Salesforce and for Google Sheets, I can integrate with bots without having to actually leave the screen that I'm already on. And so that's a really cool way to be able to integrate with the bots. Another way is through my uh, RE for desktop. And this is where I have bots that are running in attended client mode where I can have uh, integrated forms pop up. And those forms can ask me as a user some information about you know, whatever transaction I need to occur. I can fill that out. The bot would then run locally on my own workstation and it would do whatever I needed it to, right? Maybe that's doing some research on a customer, um, generating some kind of report. I would fill in details in that form and the bot would do everything else on my own desktop. The third way that we can do that human bot collaboration is through RE Web. And RE Web provides a web interface for being able to uh, allow for humans and bots to collaborate in one place. So let's use a use case where uh, you know I'm the human, I want to do this one process, I fill out the customer pin, the bot does a bunch of research to pull back all the information we might know about that customer from our various systems. It generates a report that kind of shows me in a web form everything that it found. 
I might want to fix or perfect some of that data. And then I have a couple buttons which represent options of what I want to happen next. That could be, you know, oh, I need to send this to a manager because it's a high value customer and I'm not supposed to be working with those kind of people. Or it could be, hey, some of this data is incorrect. I'm gonna correct it and I'll hit submit. And then another bot will run to correct that data in another system and then come back to verify with me again, right? Or I could just cancel and say, hey, no other action needs to be taken. But with RE Web, I have that ability to work alongside bots. And I'm basically building out these different, you know, kind of workflows uh, where, where does the human get involved? Where does the bot get involved? And where are the decisions that kind of connect all of that? So uh, the human bot collaboration and that potential is huge for me in A2019. And that's the number four reason for moving to Enterprise A2019. Number three, cloud native. Now, before anyone walks me out of the building and tells me that I've just lost my job for saying cloud is number three, hear me out here, okay? So first off, I think cloud is insanely awesome. And to say cloud native is different than saying cloud compatible, right? So for an app to say that we're cloud compatible, yeah, sure, you can install it on cloud and it works. That's one thing, right? But to be cloud native means that it was built natively to be run on cloud environments, right? So that's really impressive. Anyone who has, again, back to my own pain of uh, managing enterprise applications, anyone who's dealt with doing the architecture and implementation of an application that needs to be you know, highly available and redundant knows that this can be a huge pain and a huge challenge in working with software, right? I have to make sure, well, what happens if this one data center fails? What happens to our data? How do I ensure that I have data integrity when we do a failover to our other location? Or, hey, I've got redundancy in place. It's those three blade servers right next to each other. So if my data center goes out, I'm totally in trouble, right? So when we talk about a cloud environment and cloud on A2019, what we mean is that that's actually hosted by someone else, right? It's on AWS, it's on Microsoft. And so we don't have to worry about the behind the scenes of, you know, how do I make sure this is redundant? How do I make sure that if this one server fails, that my entire environment doesn't just crap out on me, right? And so the benefit of being on cloud is that all of that is really off put onto the cloud provider. And it's their responsibility to make sure that there's redundancy, to make sure that there's failover, and to make sure that I have optimum uptime for my service, okay? So before we get upset with Micah for saying cloud is number three, hear me out on these next two. And uh, actually my own arguments for cloud right there were kind of convincing. I might need to revisit this. Number two, custom packages. So I absolutely love the ability to add custom packages into Enterprise A2019. If you're not familiar with what that means, in version 11 and version 10, we had this concept of commands, right? And on the left-hand side, we had all these commands and it basically was my toolbox for what I wanted to do for building bots, right? So I had uh, commands that would allow me to interface with web applications, commands that would allow me to interface with Excel, um, and I would use those different commands to build my bots. The same concept really exists in A2019 where we have these packages and each package has actions, but I have the ability using the package SDK to create my own packages that will sit right next to the out of box packages in my uh, bot building interface. And that allows me to build custom packages for whatever I want. It could be a custom service that my organization uses for you know, validating our customer IDs and pulling back details. It could be a custom service to integrate with you know, however we store passwords or however we do vault management. Um, I could write a custom package that could interface with that application. On top of that, we know that BotStore has a ton of packages that are already available totally for free for to use in your bot builds. I'll admit that for myself, 99% of the bot builds that I'm doing in A2019 all contain custom packages from BotStore. If you haven't checked that out, go take a look at BotStore. Um, there are tons of free available custom packages. And for most of them, we have the code available on our GitHub as well. So if you wanna go review that and see exactly how they're built, you can do that. But I'm commonly using you know, the Salesforce package. There's a system variables package that I use quite a bit. Uh, there's a JSON object manager package. So go check those out. The ability to add custom packages, to be able to build your own, to be able to load them from um, bot store is a huge advantage to A2019. All right, drum roll please. I'll have to put that in in post. The number one 
uh, reason to move to Enterprise A2019. It's a Micah Smith favorite feature. Modular design. So what do I mean by that? If I build a bot today, right, let's think about what that bot is actually made of. So I build a bot, uh, let's say it's using the Salesforce package, it's using uh, an if package, it's using the error handler, and it's using the message box, right? Kind of a weird bot, but those are the four um, packages that it's using. So I build that bot, I test it, it's working perfectly for me, it's exactly what I want, I deploy it to prod, and it runs on my unattended bot runner, and that's exactly what I wanted, right? Six months from now, there's likely going to be new versions of each of those packages, right? When I originally built it, it was the Salesforce package 2.1.0, it was the if package 2.2.3, you know, it was the, I don't remember the error handler, it was 2.2.1, right? So I had very specific versions of each of those packages. Now, those specific package versions live on my control room. And when that task is sent out to my unattended bot runner for processing, what happens is each of those packages is sent to the bot runner if it doesn't have them already, along with a JSON. And that JSON is really what my bot is itself. And that's, you know, references to each of these packages and their you know corresponding actions and how they should be used so all of that is referencing a very specific version now back to what i was saying six months from now right there's going to be new versions likely of some of these different packages maybe not all of them but let's say that there is right my bot will still work fine even if i've upgraded my control room right because my bot is referencing specific versions of these packages now if i wanted to upgrade that bot Right? Maybe let's say that the Salesforce package has a couple new actions that I think would really add some value to my, uh, to my bot. I could upgrade just that one package on my bot. I could use whatever new features that it has. I could retest. I could leave these other three packages alone because, hey, I'm not going to touch them. They're working fine. I could redeploy that. And the next time that it runs, it would run with just that upgraded version of Salesforce, but still the other three versions of my older packages. So that modular design is absolutely genius and it allows for my bots to really exist and and for the most part be free of harm when there's upgrades that occur okay and so that to me is a huge benefit of a 2019 i don't necessarily have to be super afraid when new features come out or new software gets pushed because i know that my bot is referencing specific versions of specific packages and nothing's gonna change that until I choose to upgrade those. So that's Micah Smith's top five reasons for moving to Enterprise A2019. What do you think? Did I get them right? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your top five are. Love to hear from you. Again, my name is Micah Smith. Go be great.